Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Concept and Mikkel Willemson EDC Tack Knife, which is a button lock with a flipper and uh, thumb studs. Pretty neat. There's a link in the description for this. This is absolutely available. Uh, comes in many different forms. Some of them are more expensive or less expensive. I'll let you guys check out the links if you want to. Thanks so much to Concept for sending this in for me to review. I appreciate that. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the EDC tack knife, which is a weirdly, oddly generic name for a knife. Uh, seven and a quarter inches, it really feels like it would be longer than that, but it's seven and a quarter. Uh, blade length is coming in at, eh, you call it three and a quarter, maybe a little bit less in some areas. The actual cutting edge, which is really what matters, is about three and a quarter. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons, just a couple, just a couple today, up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here it is pretty similar to the Rat 2. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Again, very similar to the Para 3 in overall size. And last but not least, let's do the Benchmade Bug Out. Very similar in overall size to the Benchmade Bug Out. Um, how's the action? That's pretty good. Uh, the button lock will, oops, that wasn't on camera, sorry. Uh, the button lock will allow the blade to drop shut completely. Um, the flipper tab is all right. It's not so much the detent, it's the shape of the flipper tab. And then the thumb studs are, I think, positioned correctly, but small and kind of pointy. They're not the friendliest with your thumb. Then again, I'll be honest with you, I've got a bit of a slice from a previous episode on my thumb, and I think that's making it overly sensitive. So I'm trying to balance that and be honest at the same time. So do with that information what you will. Thickness. Up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see here, it's a little bit thicker, not really that big of a deal. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here, this is about the same length overall as the Para 3. Nowhere near as tall because it doesn't have a flipper, well, a super protruding flipper tab or some big hump in it like the PM2 or Para 3. So it should carry pretty well. What are we looking at for materials? We're looking at, uh, if we can see it, can you see it there? S35 VN on the blade, and then we have a combination of steel liners G10 and titanium, uh, all in the frame. It's an odd combination, but okay, you know, the way that they did it, it's pretty cool. I'm going to guess this weighs something like four ounces, four and a quarter. Nope, I was wrong. 3.7 ounces. The ratios are not bad on this guy. For some reason, it feels heavier than it actually is. We're looking at 3.25 inches of blade for 3.7 ounces of weight. Not too bad. I think most people will probably be okay with this knife. You're not going to have too much trouble with it. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The um, I think these are heat anodized steel screws, but the, they're blue. Yeah. It's not actually titanium for the screws, but it, it does, you know, it's nice that they made that little effort there. They could have just made it black. Um, yeah, we're looking at a T8 pivot, and then unfortunately the rest of the screws are T6. That's not a deal breaker, but there are a lot of them because we're holding in a separate overlay, right? So three screws for this overlay, two screws for, for this guy, two more screws here, a couple of screws for the pocket clip, and then more screws for the other overlay. So yeah, there's a lot. Make sure you've got somewhere to keep all your hardware, and you've got some quality tools, and you should be just fine. Uh, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Calipers that are just barely hanging in there. <laughs> if you're like me, you, you have to make sure the batteries are run all the way down before you replace them. Uh, we're looking at yeah, 114 thousandths on the blade stock thickness, so definitely not a thick blade at all. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get into the review. So, um, like I said, this is a Mikkel Willemson design, which you guys are probably, you know, fairly familiar with his name. He's done a lot of stuff and definitely a lot of stuff with concept here recently. The first thing that, um, you know, well, the first thing that stuck out of me was, hey, neat, a button lock, because those are super popular right now. And honestly, I think they're pretty convenient. I think they're pretty cool. They've done well. The knife community likes them, whether you're a collector, enthusiast, and a user, right? There's something there for everybody. So that's nice. Ergonomically, 
I don't really like this. Um, it's it's okay, but like this area right here is one of those areas where it either is meant for one gigantic fat sausage finger, right? My hands are about average size for a male, or um, you need to have really teeny tiny fingers because I want to be either completely in here with two fingers or completely in there with one finger. This is like one and a half fingers, right? So it's kind of weird why this area is the way that it is. The whole thing just feels funny because of that, right? The scales do have some chamfering, um, but you know, we're, we're not thick. We're just, we're thick enough to where coupled with this, the grip on this thing feels very unnatural, very odd. It feels like you're grabbing an object that wasn't necessarily made for the human hand. You know when like uh, when you're a kid and you go by, you're like, please, can we go to the section in Walmart that has all the toys, please, right? And you go down there and then you pick, you know, you point at stuff and they don't let you get it that day, but then it magically shows up under the tree for Christmas. The stuff that I always wanted were the toy swords. And I remember thinking, these look so cool, right? Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and whatever else, right? And then you grab it and you're like, wow, this really isn't made for a hand because it's got stars and crap and stuff going all over the place, right? Plastic line, it's just made to look cool. Um, this isn't quite that bad, but it does remind me of that. It does remind me like, wow, neat, I want to pick that up. And then you're, oh, well, that's not really all that comfortable. So I don't know why, you know, knife designers do this. One, an area for one finger, one, you know, regular, so I understand that people have different size fingers. If you have a massive index finger, then perhaps this would be perfect. But I'm going to guess, unless you have just a massive index finger and regular sized other fingers, that you're going to be trailing your pinky off the edge of this, right? This is just barely a full four finger grip knife. It's just not really all that comfortable. Button lock um, disengagement is real nice, real smooth. And if you light switch this knife, which it is clearly meant to be, you know, that's what it's how you're meant to deploy it because the jimping is up here, you'll be okay. I, I think they went a little bit too low profile on this. This is almost too, like you can do it, but it just nothing feels like a perfect connection, right? It doesn't feel that satisfying. Like, oh, I got it 80%, but I guess it went, right? It's kind of how it feels. These uh, kind of miniature volcano thumb studs, I think they would have done better to be a bit wider and a bit less pointy right at the top. I think I'm a, like I said, I think I'm a bit oversensitive right now because it's pretty much right on that cut right there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like either make, I, I think, uh, you know, you could get rid of the flipper tab entirely if we just had a different shape of thumb stud. But if we need the flipper tab there, then the flipper tab needs to be a different shape alongside with the thumb stud. As they sit, I'd give them both a C plus or a B minus. It's okay, right? It's just kind of a frustrating, you know, eh, and then you go to hold it and you're like, eh. Now, on the flip side, uh, the blade is very traditional and super utilitarian. It also has a really nice stonewashed finish on it. We have a whole bunch of stuff all over the blade, which we don't need, but okay. Right, we've got codes and little things like that. It's just concept does that. Um, the knife is sharp. It is not a thin blade stock and it's got a nice tip. It's also got a nice swedge. This will definitely, you know, day to day, like this is the type of blade that's gonna get stuff done and it's gonna get stuff done quickly. There's not gonna be much slowing this blade down as you pass it through material, some nice belly, right? It's just a good blade. A blade shape that we have seen a million times over because like, you know, whoever made the very first knife ever whatever caveman made this shape out of a rock, right? That's, he decided like this works, you know? So <laughs> that's just where we're at. Uh, moving back down here, um, this whole, I'm not sure why we have so many different, almost like the outer edges of a gem, right? All these different points. I don't know. Uh, it's just an aesthetic thing. I, I don't know. To me, it looks kind of weird. I don't understand what's really going on here. Um, and while the idea of combining titanium and G10 is interesting, it's almost like we're just doing it for the sake of, right? We're just, we're doing it because it's like, look, there's G10 here. And then also we have put titanium in there. Look at this. But you have three extra screws per side holding that titanium. And so it's like, why? You know, um, I don't know. That's not... This doesn't look good enough to me to justify. It's just like the lines are so random. Like all of this and like this inlay. Like I'm not really sure where anything is going or coming from. Other than like look, it kind of has this connection down here with this peak. 
There's no real rhyme or reason for anything. It's really bizarre. You know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a Picasso painting. And I don't really like Picasso paintings. So maybe, maybe that's the problem, right? But that's what it makes me think. Like, I want things to go together. I want it to make sense. Like, just don't, don't put his nose right there and don't put the eyes go in on the same plane, right? Like, anyways. Clearly, I am not somebody <laughs> who likes art. Um, there is a glass breaker right there, so you can make use of that if that's your thing. There's a lanyard hole right here, backspacer, which is titanium. Fit and finish is great, right? This is a concept knife, right? So, yeah, it looks like a gas station knife, but fit and finish is very good because this is actually a high-quality knife. It's just kind of very oddly designed, right? So, you know, if you're wondering like, oh, it's a cheap, flimsy thing. If you've never heard of Concept, no. Uh, these are fairly expensive knives and they are put together very well. Now, Concept has some really good designs and they have some other really weird designs, right? But as far as the fit and finish and overall execution of this thing and the materials used, yeah, this is a, it's, it's put together very well. It's just, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's polished. Fit and finish is very good, but the choices of how this all came together, it, it, they're odd. Pocket clip is titanium, and I don't know if they just thought it was a safe bet to go with a simple popsicle stick clip. Mm, it's, yeah, it's saving it from being even weirder, <laughs> um, but it's also stopping it from, you know, having some part of it that's almost like, ah, oh, yeah, they just went full send and made everything weird, you know? So it's just kind of odd all the way around. Very, very odd. I, I'm really not sure what to make of it. Uh, sometimes you get a knife that's like the design is weird and it's really uncomfortable, but you're like, well, but it's got so much character because there, there was this obvious, like very specific design aesthetic they were going for. And so I'm kind of balancing that as a nice, as a knife enthusiast, right? It's like, oh, the design is really interesting and they went with it. But here's the problem. This has ergonomic issues, It's and it's got a couple of uncomfortable deployment features mixed with the fact that I have no idea where they were going with the, with the design. I have no idea. Um, none of the lines make any sense to me, so I can't really give it either side of that. It does lock out completely and totally solid. We have a stop pin out here, and is there shouldering? No, it's just flat. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, no blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. We have no pivot lash. And then it's not really a detent because it's a plunge lock sinking into it. You know, but, you know, it's good uh, what it should be. Um, so this knife will cut. It will deploy. It will retract. And it will go in your pocket, which, by the way, it carries about medium. Uh, the blade is also centered. Fit and finish is very good on this guy. Uh, and the materials are pretty good for the price. G10, titanium, S35VN, uh, all with good fit and finish. Of course, you guys probably already know this. Concept knives are made in China. But, um, you know, it's just like with anything, there are high and low quality things made in all countries, right? So this is on the higher quality end in terms of fit and finish. It's just the design and execute. Well, the design was weird. So what do they want for this? 140 bucks. With just a few changes, this thing could have been really cool. Now, uh, some would argue, well, you're going to change it and make it really generic. Um, and yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, I think it's fine. Like we're in a territory at the $140 territory. A lot of people that are shopping for knives in this territory are looking for knives they're going to use, right? This is not really like, oh, put it up on the, you know, I'm not putting $140 knives in glass cases. I don't know about you, but that's not what I'm doing, right? So some of the over, like the really weird design elements is kind of like, okay, well, this, there needs, it's okay to do that, but it needs to be mixed with like the good ergonomics and ease of manipulation should be there no matter what. And then, then kind of, you know, go nuts, right? So this area, not super great. Deployment, not my favorite, and the lines and the extra hardware and what the heck, right? It's just, this is a bizarre knife. Um, if you love it, it's not a bad price, right? Uh, the, like just, you know, when we're talking about the uh, price, the, the cost of labor, 
uh, the materials they're using, and then the amount of work that went into creating this, and then the final fit and finish, all of that combined. Yeah, the price makes sense. The problem is, is that the form it takes is just weird. So if you love it, then sure, you know, spend your money on it. Not something I'm gonna openly recommend to people. Uh, there are way too many good knives that are a little bit more or a little bit less money than this guy um, that I would recommend to you immediately. It is pretty cool in any case. I mean, it's an interesting knife and it's something that I'll be giving, a giving away during a live stream at some point. So if you are new to my channel and you didn't know, most of the free stuff that I get gets given away because I have way too many knives and I don't need to hoard this stuff. So if you want to get in on that, make sure you're subscribed. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.